Hello, so today we're going to talk about how to paint some acorns and fall leaves to kind of get into the fall spirit as it's starting to get a little colder at least. <laughs> so I have a reference picture of some acorns and leaves that I found from Google. So what I'm going to do first is draw this onto a scrap piece of paper and then I'm going to transfer it onto watercolor paper. So when I'm looking at the acorns, kind of a simplified shape I get when I'm looking at them is almost like an egg or a fat oval. So very lightly, I would kind of draw, and I'm gonna do it harder so you can actually see it, but I'm gonna do kind of like that oval shape on either side, like that. And then I wanna kind of look at how the sides are a bit wider than the tip. And then I'll do the little acorn cap and draw how it curves over my acorns. And a big thing that helps you to kind of see how to draw your acorn caps um, that really helps me is looking at this little point right here and how the acorn cap hugs this part of the acorn. So if this part's really rounded, then that means, you know, something's a little off. So I could make it a little more realistic by noticing those little details on my reference picture. And that helps the shape a bit. And then I can draw the curve of the top of this other acorn. And you want to make sure this, this part is curved. And I could draw the little nubs on the end of the acorn. And then when I was ready to draw my stem, as you can see there's a little stem that's holding the leaves. I want to look at how it goes behind mine a little bit. So and I drew this one a little too low. So of course, you know, I've already pre-drawn the one I'm going to paint, but if this was the one I was going to paint, I probably would want to move my acorn up a little bit. And then after I have my leaves, then I'm gonna plan out, I mean my branch, I'm gonna plan out my leaves. So my leaves are also kind of ovally shaped. They're a little bit more of a long oval. So I'm gonna draw a long oval shape for each of my leaves, draw how they overlap, then do a line for the middle of my leaf before I then start creating the bumps and it's fairly symmetrical so similar on each side okay so that's what I would go ahead and do with your drawing I'm not really bothering for the little details because we're mainly going to paint those in and then when I am ready then I would use my 6B on the back and transfer my drawing onto my watercolor paper okay so with our acorns um, what we want to use is probably a lot of burnt sienna. So I'll have a puddle of just burnt sienna. Then I'll have a puddle that's burnt sienna and yellow. And then burnt sienna with a little bit of ultramarine blue. Or if you have like burnt umber, you could use that instead. But basically I'm just getting all those burnt siennas out. And then what I want to do is like, if you look at the acorns, you can see how they kind of have a little shiny part right here. And the way that I can preserve that, since it's a soft highlight, is by using water rather than masking fluid. So I would want to take like clean water and put a little clean water on one acorn. Okay, you can't really see where I put it, but I just put it in two little spots. And then I'm gonna take my burnt sienna, just a little bit, and I'm just doing kind of a base color on most of it, going a little between my highlights. Okay. And then while that's wet, that's when I can introduce like on the left side, a little bit of that yellowy burnt sienna. Yeah, and then a little darker on the other side. 
But of course, if it's super, super wet, you may want to wait a little bit, maybe do this layer on, you know, the other acorn and then come back to it. I'll go ahead and do it on my other one. Little water. Burnt sienna. And it's okay if your acorn edges look a little rough because it's an acorn. So, you know, it's kind of woody. So it kind of works in your favor if it has a little rough edge. So while I'm waiting for my main part of my acorns to dry, I can go ahead and add a little yellow to like a burnt umber kind of color because it's a little bit more grayish and it's going to help... Um, our acorns to be kind of center stage because it's a little bit more of a muted brown. And I can go ahead and do a light layer on my little branch. All right, so with the tops of our acorns, um, I can make kind of a nice like cream base for them by just taking burnt umber or Van Dyke Brown with a lot of water. And then I'm going to use some of the other colors we used for the main part of the acorn for some of the texture. So what I'm going to do, since this is pretty small, I can just take my brush without wetting it at all and go over the whole entire top. And then while it's wet, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and tap it in oh. on the upper left hand side and then to get kind of that funky texture which you know we'll come back in and maybe draw a little bit of the lines on there but I can start making a hint of that texture just by tapping in some little spots so not really trying to fill the whole thing but letting a little bit of that color show through. Um, so this is kind of a nice base and then later on we'll make more of a shadow down here where this acorn is going behind the other acorn. Boop, 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 boop. So this is kind of a good base to start with before I get darker. So and then while I'm letting my the top of my acorns dry, like if most of it is a little dry, you could start putting in some shadows. Sometimes it's even fun to have like a little bit of sap green onto the branch. So if I take a little water and go over my branch, put some dark brown on the bottom, it kind of fuzzes and disappears a little bit. And then you can take some of your green and tap that on top. And then it'll kind of make it look a little mossy. So if you have too much water though, then it's gonna kind of just disappear. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> and then my tops are pretty dry, so I could also take that same burnt umber and start adding a little bit of shadow. So this is where I could like almost outline underneath the cap of my, I keep wanting to say mushroom, but acorn. And you know, if I leave this like a line, it's gonna dry that way. So sometimes if you're quick enough, you can pull away from that shadow to kind of fade it in. But a lot of times the easier way is to put the shadow underneath pretty dark 
but then have it get a little bit bigger than you necessarily need it. Because then when you take the water and pull it out, it's going to be more of a soft line rather than too hard of a line. So those are just a couple different ways to do it. So on your acorn, to get a little more texture, you can use like a flat brush, especially one that's kind of splayed a little bit, it kind of works better. Um, and this is one that's for acrylic because it's a little bit stiffer, so it works really well. And instead of having to paint every single line that's on the acorn, I can actually take this dry brush and just kind of drag it in the direction that the acorn is curving and it gives you a lot of that fun texture. So I just did that with burnt sienna, but for darker areas, or if I wanted to do another layer, I may do it with my Van Dyke or burnt umber. And of course, dry brushing, the key to it is your painting underneath has to be dry and your paint's not really fully dry. It's like you have very little water on it and it's very random. So you never really know what's gonna happen with it. Okay, so next we're gonna work on the leaves just so it gives these areas a little time to dry. And also your leaves are gonna be a little dark right behind your acorn. So this is also a chance where like maybe your colors got a little outside of your drawing or you just need to reshape a side. Um, this is kind of a good way because you can kind of use it to edit that edge. So these leaves are, you know, green. They're more like, you know, just regular <laughs> leaves that come with acorns. But if you want more of a fall effect, um, we're going to go ahead and incorporate a little bit more of like yellows and oranges. But if you want to do the greens, that is perfectly, you know, fine. That's up to you. <laughs> so on my palette, I already have like that burnt sienna color, which is kind of good for like reddish parts of the leaves. And then I've also prepped some cadmium yellow, which is like school bus yellow, and then some sap green. Um, and I'll probably try and put on some orange. Like if you have to mix an orange, I normally start off with the yellow first, then take some cadmium red and add it to it. And that makes a pretty good orange. But if you already have an orange mixed, you can always use that. So with my leaf, my leaves are pretty small, so I don't really have to wet them first. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna paint my whole entire leaf yellow. And if I had any little areas that maybe I wanted them to be a bit lighter, that's where I would use a little water. Just to kind of spread it a little bit. Hmm. And I may not take the yellow all the way to the edge. And then while that's wet, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start grabbing some of my other colors. So like this is orange, and I'm just gonna drag it in. So I'm doing like a wet on wet technique where it's gonna kind of blossom and spread into my leaf. And you don't want to lose your yellow because it adds a lot of fun like brightness to your leaf but you know if I cover over a lot of it with the orange it still works and then I'll also do some green over here and that's where I'm using that green to kind of help define the edge And then one fun little trick is while your leaf is still wet, or at least a tiny bit wet, I can take a small flat brush, kind of stiff, and I can do lifting. So that's where I take my flat brush. And I'm kind of wiping it off with my finger as I go. And instead of drawing the veins in my leaf, I'm going to lift them. It's 
So, and then once it's a little drier, I'll probably do the same thing on my other leaf, but you know, you don't want to rush it because then everything's going to bleed together. And I can always come back in and like add maybe a little shadow to one side of my veins. So and then what you can do next is start adding a little more definition and details to the caps of your acorn. So again, it depends on what parts of your picture are dry. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start using a bit of my dark brown. And to separate these two, I can use this dark brown to kind of put a little shadow right here. And then I'll use some water to fade it into the rest of the cap. Like that. And then I also want to put a little bit more burnt sienna. On my caps. And then I can literally draw with my paintbrush, you know, little curves or triangles to make the details on there. You could also do kind of like the plaid technique where you do like lines and then crisscross the lines, but sometimes that looks a little too cartoony. So maybe if I just do that in a few areas, then it helps to kind of simplify it a little bit. So I could even do maybe like that and then scrub a little water so it's a little blurry. Then have some other lines going in another direction. So you just have kind of a hint of texture. So it's up to you how detailed you want it to be. And then the other thing I would want to do is, you know, darkening my leaf a bit where it's behind this other leaf. So I like to turn when I'm trying to do things like this. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker with my green that's behind this other part. And that's gonna help this one to stand out a little bit more. And it creates a little bit more depth instead of them being on like the same plane, then one of them is behind the other. And I could do the same thing with my yellow, not adding green to it but using a darker yellow, like maybe yellow ochre to go behind it, or even I could have used brown. So, and then even if your leaf dries, I could wet my lifting brush and I could still, see, kind of lift a little bit. Of course, if you have kind of a soft flat brush, it's not gonna work as well So like this one's a little soft. So it's a little harder to get those lines. But again, you could always like just draw them in with brown. You just don't want to do too many or else it looks a little weird. And I'll fade them a bit. I could also use it to lift and put my acorn in front of this leaf a little bit. Add a little more shadow. And last but not least, you have those little nubs at the end and I can make those show up a little bit better just by putting a shadow to one side. Like that. So, and that's how to paint some acorns.